Hello, everyone. My name is Kole Panchenkai. I work at sci fi on vector vectorizer, and my talk will be today about vectorizations in LLVM. Uh, I'm going to discuss challenges that we had. Um, some slides will be about how to make it uh, your code more uh, good, better for vectorization, and uh, yeah, let's let's get started. So, even though we don't have much people here, but I'm going to assume that uh, not so many are. Some people are not familiar with vectorization, so uh, vectorization is a technique that uh, in a compiler that transforms scalar code to the vector form in a short form. In, this, uh, in, in brief, uh, it's a brief explanation, right? Uh, there are two major components of it. Of it. Uh, one is called loop vectorization. Uh, by its name, it tries to vectorize the, uh, the loop and replace basically a scalar code, a scalar loop with a vector loop. The other one is uh, called SLP, or it's uh, other way of like saying straight line code vectorization. Um, uh, it, it works on uh, non -loop, in a non-loop context. I'm going to discuss uh, both of them um, in details, uh, but let's start first with loop vectorization and uh, with some history of it as well. Uh, originally, LVM uh, Loop vectorizers in, loop vectorizer in LVM was uh, designed to support so-called VLS type of vectorization. Um, it's VLS stands for vector length specific, and uh, where ve vector length or vector factor, how other, some people are calling it, is compiled non-constant and is a power of two. Um, in general, vectorizer, the loop vectorizers uh, generates uh, two things. Uh, one is the uh, so, uh, main loop. Uh, basically, it will contain a vector code with which will execute main number most number of it, uh, iterations uh, using vector instructions, and there will be a remainder loop, or some people are calling it epilogue loop or cleanup loop, um, which most of the time won't be vectorized, and its, it's goal is to re execute the remain number of iterations if uh, runtime, if trip count is kind of unknown or is not divisible and is not divisible by four, uh, in this case four. Um, later, uh, ARM came in with their um, scalable vector extension, and uh, this uh, they introduced the uh, extended loop vectorizer to have a so-called vector lens agnostic vector type of vectorization, where they just relaxed one constraint of vector lens, or this VL or vector factor, to be a runtime value, but it's still a loop invariant value. So it means that in general, loop vectorizer here generates two things, this main loop and the remainder loop. Um, but what is more fascinating is that, well, last year, right, RVV was uh, ratified and it allows to relax the other constraint, basically to have a vector lens to be not a loop invariant value and be able to uh, execute all iterations in of an original loop using the same vector code. Uh, in this case, uh, we have to obviously generate something, uh, compute a vector lens every vector iteration. Um, yeah, and that's what we, at least internally in, in the sci-fi, uh, called RVV VLA in order to distinguish to VLA that are added. And from here, I'm going to say that it's just something that we have uh, in, internally, but it, uh, and it's not in upstream. In upstream, what you can use right now is uh, the above example, where basically the VLA um, and is turned on right now. And we would like to open source what we have, um, but it may take some time. Um, so first of all, when we tr enabled this type of RV VLA vectorization, we got this performance data using our spec to some six numbers, and you can see it's like there are some uh, good improvements, uh, there are some bad numbers, like in Hammer and Leap Quantum, and I'm going to explain why this we, ha we had this something like that. But what's also important is to see, well, since we are not we, we are not generating this remainder or epilogue loop. How, uh, what is it will be a cost size reduction overall. And from here, it's not actually that quite clear what happened. In a sense that uh, in some benchmarks, uh, we got cost size improve, well, increase the cost size, but we got some pro uh, cost size, uh, a better performance, which maybe it's not actually a good uh, indicator here, but overall I can say here that uh, this is what we did half of a year ago. and. Um, we actually got, got a code size reduction uh, right now. Um, and in, a, in the case of Hammer and LibQuantum, I'm going to explain what, what happened uh, a bit later, but let's, uh, and actually it goes to the next section which uh, explains what challenges we had in order to support something like that. This one is uh, kind of known, uh, okay, it's LVM 
things, and uh, LVM has a type system, and it's it is already known that uh, this type system cannot easily handle um, RVV. So uh, people community come up, came up with uh, encoding uh, in order in order to encode fractional LMU. Um as basically one eighth is not possible to be uh, used in a vector type system that LVM has. Um, the th other thing is that we certainly had the issue as kind of a problem is that loop factorizer itself is not designed was not designed correctly to or actually not correctly it wasn't designed to handle vector uh, to to generate vector length dependent code. Um, so we had to basically fix a bunch of uh, code generator in uh, vectorizer. And the other important thing is that uh, loop vectorizer heuristics are not designed to uh, handle. Uh, sorry. Uh, and are designed to handle um, uh, RVV uh, and future optimizations that actually uh, can optimize vector code as they were not designed to support uh, such code that actually depends on vector lens, which actually explains why um, some this hammer, for instance, regression came from uh, optimizations that was just not kicked in for uh, that type of vectorization. Uh, the other interesting but less less technical thing is that internally in the commun uh, in within the team, we uh, when we started to discuss like what uh, is the strategy to do vectorization for uh, some loop, usually it was kind of hard to uh, even for compiler engineers it was kind of hard to uh, discuss using uh, terminology that is specific for VLS or ARMS VLA. Um, for instance, using encoding doesn't really make sense, uh, or it's harder to uh, understand what is. What, which, how we need to vectorize the loop. And if we go even outside of the loop uh, and start to speak with the user who, who is not familiar with, uh, let's say, uh, encoding, it's even more complicated to uh, to say, like, that is like encoding we are going to use. It's a little bit like uh, using alien, alien language to speak with uh, people um, yeah, who are not familiar with LVM. So for example, in this case, if we consider this pragma vector width um, for RV, it doesn't really make sense because what does two mean here? Does it mean we need to enable VLS? And well, if then we are losing our V capability. Does it mean L02? The question will be like how we can specify one eighth or one fourth in order to be functionally complete? Or does it mean VLAN? Or in, in any case, how to specify SCW? Um, same goes to, well, ARM extended this close in order to support scalable vectors, but uh, same, almost same questions are stays. Say um, we don't know still how to uh, what it means actually to the user and how the user key will um, can use it in a nice way. So at least in the local uh, in the internal we use some gloss uh, uh, came up with some glossary here and uh, this is like aligned with uh, what uh, LVM already has. But there is so called like, which we call a primary runtime vector lens is basically a vector lens that is used to increment a loop index. Um, and then we have a, like RV pair, basically is a, a pair of LMO and SCWs that are used to compute RVL, and there is a there are derivatives of, of it as well. So, for example, what is needed is uh, let's say if we sp look at this loop, and it considered to be vectorized, we have such set set VLIs that are generated here, and the first one is a, which is a green one is actually is generates this RVL primary RVL, and it uses this primary. Um, LMU and SCW and other VCIT VLIs, they are uh, supportive. And then in some cases, actually, it's in this case, for instance, uh, it's less obvious why they cannot be used in, in order to support, uh, kind of used to be com to compute RVL, but there are some cases where vectorizer may generate actually uh, just reset VL to one or something like that, and it will be uh, essential to dis differentiate VCIT VLIs that are used to increment the loop index and which are used to actually compute some uh, it's right operation. And what we did also modified the vector report, which is uh, useful for end users in order to understand what happened with the loop. And in this case, uh, printing that which LMU and SCW was used, or actually in this case, it's actually a data type was used to vectorize the loop is quite important for the user in order to not to speak with uh, using LN language, unlike if it's just a report uh, this vscalex2, what does it mean for the user? It won't be really clear. Um, so overall, what are best practices to get better performance with RVV VLA, I would say. So 
there are three options that are always uh, best friends uh, for any developer uh, who would like to understand what, ha uh, what happened with the loop. Uh, these three options will tell which loop was vectorized, which, one was, which loops were not vectorized, and it will try to explain why the loop was not vectorized. Um, we also had to s limit um, our selection of the primary ML because uh, in order to avoid, because during this transition uh, to like of everything to, you know, to, to every VVLA, we had to limit it because uh, there are some corner cases that may not be desirable for the user and to avoid um, panic and uh, an loss of runtime problems, we prefer to just avoid it to one. And But if you have a code, for instance, which you, you know that will benefit from higher ELMU, uh, this is the option that currently we provided to in order to increase the ELMU uh, selection. But obviously, I would like to not to, I want to not advocate this one uh, in the long run. However, uh, there is a, uh, my colleague, he, uh, he already wrote RFC in order to provide more user convenient pragma to let user actually guide the victorizer. Um, the other thing is I also want to uh, emphasize that please don't use this uh, vector width pragma because it only uh, relates to VLS and we, or VLA, um, uh, ARMS VLA, so it again doesn't really make sense for RVD. Uh, however, there is another one uh, scenario when it can may be desirable because there is some, again, li some limitations right now. Uh, for instance, we don't have yet math functions, math vector math functions for RVD. And if you still have a code which will um, benefit from doing scalarization of math functions, um, the scalarization only can currently works for VLS. So in this case, um, there is another option either, yeah, is one option is to either use this pragma or completely disable uh, RVD VLA vectorizer uh, using that uh, Clang option. Um, obviously, again, the, during this transition, we have, I would say, lots of uh, uh, areas for improvements, uh, so f and the uh, performance may not be uh, what is expected or uh, you ex uh, hit uh, some runtime problem. And in this case, if you want to move forward with your uh, work, uh, consider maybe to just disable vectorization using uh, vectorized disable option, which is already uh, exist. Um, there are some cases where com loop can be completed unrolled. Um, so if you would like to still have a Loop vectorizer to kick in. Consider to use this uh, unroll disable option in our uh, program uh, so that uh, loop vectorizer will see the loop and vectorize it. I'm going to actually st uh, stay on it, uh, say, uh, say it again in a slide, in few more in later slides again. And something that people usually forget is that LVM ha has by default FP model strict, which allows, disallows to, uh, disallows FP association. So if you have a loop user reduction, there is an either you we will need to use either fast math option, uh, which will have a global effect on a compilation unit and it will actually allow us reassociation for everything. Or you can use this uh, special pragma within a loop, which will allow reassociation only within the uh, loop of interest. Um, and another thing is uh, some compilers have uh, pragma IV dep, which are basically it's quite useful for assumed dependencies. Uh, let's a uh, well-known example is if you have a histogram case where compiler has to behave conservatively and since it's like A or B of I plus plus, B of I may be identical during vector iteration, uh, there will be a dependency in order, and if you know that your data won't be like that, um, please just use this option in order to uh, help the compiler to, say, to understand that it's safe to do vectorization for that pattern. Um, let's switch the gear and I'm going to tell, talk about the SLP. Uh, so as I mentioned before, SLP is just a, uh, is a straight line code vectorizer, vectorizer. So it, again, it works uh, outside of the loop context. It may work outside of loop context. And by, by its nature, it has only VLS style of vectorization. So we can like, use here any, anything, call it a VLA, uh, VLS in, or something like that. Um, it has few major limitations and obviously well known is one, one is that it only works on a straight line code. Uh, so if you have a control flow, some control flow with in, in between, for instance here, 
uh, SLP will only be able to visualize B0, B1, and B2, B3 separately, but not B2, B0, B3 at the same time. Uh, there is another current limitation which uh, my colleague is trying to uh, address in upstream. And basically, it only can handle power of two number of statements. Uh, it's like I'm trying to oversimplify it here, but um, and that actually leads that since RVV allows to uh, also have a vector lens which is not a power of two, that actually kind of limits. Uh, um, well, we are not using RVV, RVV strains in uh, uh, and fully. Uh, again, here is a point here. For instance, if we have a loop which uh, where it was completely unrolled, and for instance, this loop only had seven iteration. Um, we can vectorize this loop using RVV VLA uh, and execute seven iterations at once. Um, but if it's completely unrolled, and uh, yeah, SLP won't be able to vectorize all seven uh, statements, um, which is again, like, but this, there is a work in progress in upstream uh, to, again, to fix it. Um, the other limitation of it is just it, SLP right now, it tries to vectorize everything at once, basically it builds a, a, a tree of all candidates and if this tree is not, if it, uh, is not beneficial to be vectorized, it will, it will just give up. It won't try to, it won't try to prune some branches and to make it uh, profitable for vectorization. So the SLP has a few best practices again, uh, there's three options are best friends again, uh, it will, they will tell you uh, what happened, what SLP saw, what, uh, what it tried to vectorize, what it didn't. Um, since uh, cost model, again, like it actually depends on, uh, yeah, there is a still work on a cost model, but it may also depend on uh, different architectures and different architectures may have different requirements. So if you have uh, something, some, uh, some case where, which was vectorized by the SLP, but you do see a regress, performance regression, you may need to uh, specify SLP threshold, increase it, increase it in order to make this uh, tree not vectorizable. Or actually maybe even if you see that SLP was not actually kicked, kicked in for some reason, you may actually try to reduce it in order to, for uh, SLP was not kicking in because of some uh, heuristics and you may need to reduce it in order to make it vectorizable. Or there is another option to just disable the SLP completely. Uh, so overall summary here is that uh, RV uh, provide many technical challenges in uh, for LVM, and I actually found th find this fascinating to me. Uh, that um, in the, uh, uh, and we we are working on solving them. I obviously would like to uh, upstream these uh, solutions. Some non-technical challenges again related to pragmas options and so on that also uh, I, I, I do th think we need to address. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to. Uh, support RVD in L LVM and uh, to have productive dis discussions uh, how, to how we can do that and how we can make uh, everyone's life easier to uh, vectorize loops using RVD. That's all, thanks. Looks like no questions, so uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>